Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in the Saudi capital Riyadh in response to the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to attend the conclusive uh, ceremony of the King Abdul Aziz Camel Festival held under the auspices of the Saudi monarch. His Majesty the King, upon arrival, was received by His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bender bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the governor of Riyadh region, and senior officials. His Majesty expressed delight to visit the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and meet with the Saudi monarch. His Majesty also expressed appreciation for the invitation to attend the final ceremony of the King Abdulaziz Camel Festival, which presents the bright image of the Saudi cultural scene and the genuine policy of the Saudi leadership consolidated by late King Abdulaziz Al Saud, the founder of the modern Saudi state, in view of the importance of supporting the national Saudi heritage and genuine progressive features. His Majesty the King hailed the efforts of the Saudi monarch in boosting fraternal bilateral ties and his constant leading efforts in supporting the march of the Gulf Corporation Council, the development of joint Arab work, as well as defending Islamic issues. He also commended Saudi Arabia's leading role in defending Arab issues, stressing the importance of unity of stance to overcome all challenges and difficulties to achieve prosperity for the people of the GCC. His Royal Highness uh, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, attended the uh, Royal Q for the graduation of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst in the British capital, London. Among the graduating batch was His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's granddaughter, Sheikh Aisha bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The ceremony was organized under the patronage of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who deputized the British Prime Minister Theresa May to attend the ceremony. A number of the royal family members and guests were also also present. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister was welcomed by the commander of the Sandhurst Royal Military Academy. The military parade began by the entry of the queue of graduate uh, students who received prizes. During the ceremony, British Prime Minister Theresa May addressed the gathering, congratulating the graduates, asserting that they are a source of pride to their nations. Mrs. May expressed pride in the graduation of Sheikh Aisha bin Rashid Al Khalifa as the first Bahraini woman to graduate from the academy wishing her success and best of luck in her life. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister congratulated his granddaughter for her graduation, noting the development training programs provided by the Academy that offers models of discipline, giving and leadership through its graduates. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also praised the efforts exerted by Sheikh uh, Aisha that qualified her to graduate from the Academy, wishing her all the best. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister asserted that Sheikh Aisha presented a, a living model of the determination and challenge of the Bahraini woman in specific and the GCC woman in general to reach her goals of taking the highest levels of at the different work fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa met today with British Prime Minister Theresa May on an official visit to the United Kingdom. May welcomed His Royal Highness who is participating in the graduation ceremony of Sandhurst Royal Military Academy and congratulated him on the graduation of his granddaughter Sheikh Aisha bin Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as the first Bahraini woman to graduate from this academy. His Royal Highness praised the bilateral deep historic relations and stressed the need to exert more efforts to strengthen in cooperation in all fields. He hailed the level of cooperation reach in all levels, especially in the political, economic and military fields. He also praised the role of the Bahraini-British Joint Working Group. His Royal Highness expressed pride and appreciation for the match point of views between the two countries regarding the development witnessed on the international levels and the need to combat all forms of terrorism threatening the security and stability of the world. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation for the generous hosting and warm reception, which affirms the strong ties between both countries. The two sides also discussed the positive outcomes of the participation of May in the GCC summit that was held last December, which aimed to strengthen the relations between the GCC countries and the UK. He wished a success to the GCC Britain meeting that will be hosted in the in UK next November. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at the Dhabi Palace yesterday the Sudanese President Omar Al Bashir. Present were members of the royal family, ministers, and senior officials. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted Bahrain's firm commitment to continue advancing collaboration and cooperation with Sudan to contribute to achieving joint interests to both countries and their people. His Royal Highness hailed Sudan's long-standing and distinguished role in supporting joint Arab cooperation, adding that this reflects Sudan's commitment to maintaining security and stability of the region. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince praised the progressing Bahraini-Sudan cooperation in various areas, noting in particular the steady growth of investment and agricultural cooperation between the two countries. The Crown Prince also referred to the positive contribution of the Sudanese community in the development process in Bahrain. During the meeting, regional and international developments, as well as other issues of mutual interest, were discussed. Later, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, hosted a dinner banquet in honor of the Sudanese President and his accompanying delegation. His Majesty the King's representative for charity works and youth affairs, President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain's Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today GCC Secretary General Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was briefed on the achievements in the GCC Council March in addition to the latest developments to enhance the GCC joint action in accordance with the vision of the GCC leaders. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the fruitful and positive outcomes of the GCC March to achieve the aspirations of the people of the GCC towards further collaboration and integration based on their joint destiny. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also expressed pride and appreciation for the efforts exerted by the GCC leaders in achieving the common interests of the GCC countries in all fields. He lauded the GCC political, economic and development achievements, noting the fine efforts exerted by the GCC Secretary General in supporting the Council's march and bolstering coordination and integration among its members. For his part, Dr. Zayani asserted the GCC keenness on boosting joint Arab action on all levels to achieve the noble objectives of the Council that are supported by the GCC leaders. He also hailed the roles played by His Highness Sheikh Nasser in enhancing joint GCC action within the vision of the GCC leaders, in addition to His Highness's role in developing youth and sports movement in Bahrain and the GCC countries. Under the patronage of His Majesty, the King's Representative for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation for Charity and Humanitarian Work, has made or has done the sixth mass wedding for 886 brides and grooms at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Manama today. The ceremony, the biggest to be organized by the foundation in Bahrain, was attended by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, the General Director of the foundation, Mr. Mohammed Hajji Al Khouri, Governor of the Capital Government, Mr. Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, UAE Charge d'Affaires in Bahrain, Saeed.
السيد سالم الكتبي and RCO Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid in addition to a number of senior officials and guests. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised His Majesty the King's support to charity work in Bahrain. His Majesty the King, the honorary president of the RCO, is the primary supporter of charity and humanitarian work in the kingdom through His Majesty's generous initiatives on all the different occasions. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also lauded His Majesty the King's directives of providing all the support to the youth of Bahrain and His Majesty's keenness on collaborating efforts to stand with youth at the beginning of their life by offering them means of a good life. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Bahrain Olympic Committee, the BOC's Secretary General Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid reviewed Bahrain's achievements during 2016 and the beginning of 2017 and congratulated Fajr Al bin Ali for winning the FA Cup for Taekwondo for fighting and Pumse. Also congratulating chairman and members of the board of directors of the association and the technical and administrative bodies. His Highness affirmed that the Bahrain Olympic Committee exerts its efforts to achieve the plan of the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work and youth affairs chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa to develop the youth and sports sector in the kingdom. He also added that the committee led by His Highness Sheikh Nasser works to implement mechanisms and programs that support working in national associations to achieve the highest levels of success by raising the standard of technical sports. He hailed the efforts of the committee that aimed to develop sports culture and promote the importance of sports. His Highness also reviewed the program of the Bahrain Olympic Committee of the Next Stage that aims to continue developing the sector that witnesses a large participation from Bahraini youth, which serves all the aspirations of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to implement the directives of the wise leadership. For his part, BOC Secretary General expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khaled, hailing his efforts to support sports and Bahraini youth. He also affirmed that these efforts reflect His Highness's keenness to achieve the goals of the development plan set by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth, Honorary President of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, Founder of Khalid bin Hamad Mixed Martial Arts Organization, the KHK MMA, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired today at His Highness's office in Rafah the first meeting of the High Organizing Committee of the Mixed Martial Arts Championship. His Highness Sheikh Khalid stated that hosting the championship, which will be held next November, reflects the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation's recognition of Bahrain's abilities and qualities. Qualifications. He added that such achievements were made possible due to the support of the wise leadership and the development plan set by the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting included the formation of the Executive Committee under the chairmanship of the President of the Bahraini Martial Arts Federation, Colonel Khalid Abdelaziz Al Khayyat. His Highness Sheikh Khalid approved holding an expo along with the championship. The expo will include sections for sports equipment, health supplies, entertainment and a food court. The meeting
meeting also reviewed the championship promotional campaign, which will be launched today at the Bahrain International Circuit, coinciding with the Formula One Grand Prix. Nazayna Sheikh Khalid concluded that the meeting with urging all members to exert their utmost efforts to ensure the success of this global event. He also called on foreign TV channels to cover the championship. The commander of the Royal Guard Special Force in Bahrain Defense Force, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Sakhir Air Base yesterday members of the Special Duty Force affiliated to Bahrain Defense Force participating in Operation Restore Hope in Yemen. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed thanks and appreciation to their efforts in performing their national duty as part of the Arab coalition forces led by Saudi Arabia and supporting the legitimacy in Yemen. Present were senior BDF officers and relatives of the participating special duty force personnel. Sudanese uh, President uh, Marshal Omar Hassan al-Bashir and his accompanying delegation left Bahrain today in conclusion of their official visit, during which he held talks with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa focused on the bilateral ties as well as the latest regional and Arab developments. The Sudanese President was seen off by uh, Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak al-Khalifa, Justice Islamic Affairs and Endowment Minister, head of the Guests Honor Convoy, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali al-Khalifa, the Ambassador of Sudan to Bahrain, Abdurrahman Khalil Ahmed, and the Deputy Governor of the Southern Governorate. Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force Field Marshal Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received at BDF Headquarters Chief of the Malaysian Armed Forces General Raja Muhammad Effendi bin Raja Muhammad Noor and his accompanying delegation. Present was the Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi and the Commander of the Royal Guard Brig Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. An official discussion session was held between the Bahraini and the Malaysian sides, reviewing the achievements of the BDF and the development of its units in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander. The meeting also discussed ways to develop the military cooperation between Bahrain and Malaysia. The two sides then exchanged commemorative gifts. BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the Bahrain and Malaysian relations, affirming the leadership's keenness to further enhance these relations in various fields. He also held a lunch banquet in honor of the Malaysian chief and his accompanying delegation. The Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir and the accompanying delegation visited the Economic Development Board today to review the leading Bahraini experience in the economic promotion of the kingdom. He also received by uh, he was received uh, by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah, the advisor of His Majesty the King for Economic Affairs, Dr. Hassan bin Abdullah Fakhru, Minister of Finance Sheikh Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain Rashid Al Maraj and EDB's chief executive Khaled al rumehi He hailed the Kingdom of Bahrain's development in various fields as it has been an important economic center, especially in the fields of banking, and expressed hope to develop cooperation with financial institutions in Bahrain. He also pointed out the Kingdom's many advantages in terms of geographical location as well as its being one of the vast markets in the eastern part of the African continent. To have natural resources consisting of water, multiple climates and qualified and trained human beings. Aramehi presented a detailed explanation of the promising investment opportunities in Bahrain and the work of the council and touched on a number of industrial projects to be executed in the next years. The Sudanese president was accompanied on his visit by a number of ministers and senior officials and the Sudanese ambassador to Bahrain, Abdurrahman Khalil Ahmed and head of the honor mission, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. The President of Sudan, Omar Hassan al-Bashir, received today at his residence the Interior Minister, Let 
Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. They discussed the bilateral brother relations and ways to further enhance these relations. The Sudanese uh, president affirmed that this visit will open up the horizon to strengthen the bilateral cooperation in various fields. He pointed out the respect and appreciation that Sudan has towards the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Interior Minister praised the successful visit and the talks held with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that will contribute in enhancing the bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields. He hailed the level of cooperation between the two countries in the security fields and the exchange of expertise among both countries' officials in order to benefit both countries and people. The Interior Minister then praised the firm stances of Sudan towards Bahrain, wishing the relations between the two countries further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Mr. Zayed bin Rashid Azayani, launched the second edition of Hurafna Handcraft Festival yesterday at Bab al Bahrain. More in this report with Hib Abdel Ghaffar. In line with Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority's strategy to highlight Bahrain's tourism infrastructure, Hirafna Handicrafts Festival draws in a large audience to Mane Masouq, one of the key locations that attract Formula One visitors. The festival reiterates the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism's commitment to enhance traditional handicrafts and preserve the skills for future generations by further developing the local craftsmanship and providing them with a platform to showcase their handmade goods. It's part of our duty to preserve our heritage and culture and preserve our handicrafts. Uh, we, it also coincides with us launching a new website for all the handicrafts produced in Bahrain. This website you'll be able to shop on and buy whatever handicrafts available and they will have, and have them delivered to your residence or your office. So the next step for us is to take these talented artists and artisans internationally and to promote Bahrain through our handicraft and tradition. To promote Bahrain and promote the local handicrafts industry. Last year we had more than 100,000 visitors to the same festival. This year it's bigger, larger, more artisans are participating. More than 18 local craftsmen are participating in the festival running until the 18th of April, showcasing the local handicrafts and products such as hand-weaved baskets, traditional musical instruments, wooden boxes, pottery, model ships and much more. This event is a good opportunity for me uh, because, you know, I, I have started uh, making perfume. I, I learned this from my mother. And um, I am doing something, you know, um, like a traditional for, for the girl, for Bahrainis. I have um, different products from the painting here, uh, bookmarks, necklaces, mirrors, boxes. And uh, you can see all the features of, of Bahrain in my products. Bead books, crystals, painting, I'm making jewelries also. And I'm, plus I'm doing uh, recycling uh, with different things like uh, paper, newspaper, magazines, bottles, cans, everything. Visitors were very pleased with the atmosphere and showed great interest in purchasing the traditional crafts produced in high quality and incredible talent. Fantastic, it's really, really nice, all beautiful products and nice people. The culture is so much different from, from the UK that it's just fascinating to see all the local skills and trades that people can do. The festival also includes live performances by traditional Bahraini bands, creating a unique atmosphere introducing Bahrain's local heritage, aiming to maintain it as a distinctive family tourism destination that offers unique local goods and attractions. Innovation, culture, heritage and amazing talents all united today in such a friendly environment. Harafna Festival showcases local products, highlighting Bahrain's captivating traditions. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. The Malaysian Chief of Defense Forces General Tan Nasseri Raja Muhammad Afendi bin Raja Muhammad Noor visited the Bahraini Royal Navy and was received by Bahrain Royal Navy Commander Sheikh Khalifa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and a number of senior BDF officers. After inspecting the Guards of Honor, the Malaysian Chief of Defense Forces was briefed on the regulations and duties of the Bahrain Royal Navy stages of its formation and development and the weapon systems operating in it. Director General General of Military Cooperation, Rear Admiral Mohammed Hashim Al Sada, and a number of senior BDF were also present. 
The 2017 Formula One Gulf Grand Prix countdown is almost coming to an end with one of a few hours until the biggest, most awaited event of the year. Toro Russo and Red Bull Racing held a press conference today at the Bahrain Soft Hotel where both teams shared their thoughts on taking the track. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. With only a few hours until the biggest event of the season, Bahrain welcomed into the kingdom its esteemed guests for this year's Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. Both Red Bull Racing and Toro Rosso shared their thoughts about racing the BIC's 5.412 kilometer desert track at a press conference held today. I've just been training, so doing some running, some stuff in the gym. Um, and then, so on a Thursday, so the last day, before not drive uh, before driving uh, we spend time with the engineers we prepare the the car and uh, what we think will be the best to to start you know the practice with so it's more i would say today is more about study and then tomorrow obviously then we drive for me i obviously just try and work on maybe some weaknesses from my race in china um, and as a team they bring some new parts to this race some little bits on the car with the front wing things like this which can hopefully make us a bit faster I think the track is very beautiful, also the Coco track. I mean, that's the first time I came here in Bahrain uh, for. Um, yeah, the weather conditions, I mean, over 30 degrees, you're next to the, the sea. So I really enjoy coming back here. I think we have to be realistic. Um, of course, China was a great result to be on the podium, but I think here normally, if there are no issues with other teams as well and not with us, then we should be fifth and sixth. So um, we'll try to target for that. I mean, of course, we always give it our best to go further. Both teams are busy preparing for all of this weekend's action and are gearing up to score points and make it to the podium at the first night race of the season. The weather is very good here, uh, very sunny, uh, cool location. The track is, should be quite nice and offer good uh, opportunities for good racing, so we are all excited. We've uh, been scoring points so far, we've been in Q3 also quite a lot, uh, so uh, we will try to keep doing that and try to keep scoring points. That's the only thing we can focus on right now. I've obviously been doing some training sessions in the heat, in the outside, trying to adapt the body to, to these conditions. I've also been um, trying to, to stay up a bit longer in the morning uh, to adapt because the race is at night. No, You need to sleep a bit longer in the mornings. This year, hopefully we can get some points. You know, I haven't been very lucky in the past here in Bahrain. I think I've retired twice, two out of two times. So hopefully this year the bad luck ends. And if it ends, I'm, I'm convinced we can be on the points. The 2017 Formula One Gulf Air Grand Prix is starting from Friday and continuing until Sunday is said to be one of the most exciting and predictable in years for both the racers and the fans. With its twilight timing and desert setting, the 2017 Formula One Gulf Air Grand Prix racers are getting ready for the most anticipated event of the year. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The newly formed auction company Mezad is holding its first event tonight, an auction for private vehicle number plates. The company was announced last week by Mumtalakat Holding and has been set up to spearhead the conduction and organization of auctions in Bahrain. More in the following report with Mohammed al-Shaban. Mezad, a new company responsible for conducting and organizing auctions, is hosting its first event tonight, an auction for private vehicle number plates. The launch of Mezad was announced by Mumtelekat Holding Company, the government's investment arm, late last week, and comes to underscore the kingdom's commitment to encouraging transparency, fairness and competitiveness across key sectors. It also comes in line with the government's vision of diversifying the economy and adopting new sources of income. Earlier this week, Mazad signed a cooperation agreement with Arabian auction companies to manage the auctioning. This comes to enhance links with organizations that have wide-ranging experience in organizing auctions on a large scale following internationally recognized standards. The event tonight has already generated a lot of interest with registration open from 11 a.m. A number of fast-track power of attorney points have already been set up since Wednesday. Regardless of nationality, bidders registered to participate in the auction will be able to purchase an unlimited number of private vehicle number plates during the auction. The auction will also be open for spectators and members of the public and will continue.